Okay, meet me at the bar in 15 minutes and suit up! How I Met Your Mother's Barney Stinson is nothing without his suit. Nothing suits me like a suit! It's the uniform that makes him feel like a superhero, whether he's at work, hanging out with his friends, or wooing women. Do you remember why we suit up, James? The suit shows that we are a force to be reckoned with. Barney's suits are such a vital part of his identity that even the origin story we get for this confident ladies' man culminates in him putting on the suit. That was the night I was born. I rose like a phoenix, Armani-clad and fully awesome. So what's the deeper symbolism of the Barnacles fashion item of choice? I'm at a point in my life where my suits are my family. By dressing the way he does, Barney invokes centuries of associations with the suit, a long-held signifier of masculinity, success, and power. How do you sleep at night? A bed made of money. This unapologetic bro, who begins as a fragile, sensitive, and damaged individual, uses his everyday costume to project an idea of himself, which is the foundation of his whole worldview. Take the money. Money's good. Money is happiness. But there's also a darker, controversial side to the suit identity, which plants it at the center of a culture war that's been quietly raging for decades. My last three boyfriends were Wall Street guys. Bastards. So I vowed never again to date a guy who wears suits. And in the years since the end of How I Met Your Mother and the simultaneously airing Mad Men, the suit's traditional connotations of strength and status have increasingly faded, giving way to new wardrobes of power. Here's our take on why, when it comes to Barney Stinson, the suit truly makes the man, and what kind of man lies underneath it. Wait, those are your pajamas? You sleep in a pajama suit? Of course. What do you think I sleep in? If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notified about all our new videos. This video is brought to you by Bespoke Post, a monthly subscription service that delivers a box of awesome right to your doorstep. With Bespoke Post, you'll receive a stellar selection of products that are personalized for you. Every box has a retail value of at least $70, but only costs members $45. So click the link in the description below to join Bespoke Post today for free. And if you're a new subscriber, enter the code TAKE20 to get 20% off your first box. Shall I walk you through the history? I'm going to explicitly say no. Barney comes into his friends' lives fully formed, impeccably suited up, and preaching the gospel of doing likewise. Get a suit. Suits are cool. Exhibit A. But he was once a tie-dye-wearing hippie with dreams of making the world better. Joining the Peace Corps with you is going to be legendary. I know. <laughs> Only five short weeks till we're down in Nicaragua. Who viewed suit types with disdain. <laughs> Suits. Barney only became the materialistic ladies' man we know when a businessman stole his girlfriend after giving him some harsh words of advice. Forget all that touchy-feely crap. You get money, you get laid. End of discussion. It was then that Barney reinvented himself, beginning with suiting up in the uniform of the man who bested him in a sequence that channels the feeling of a warrior getting ready for battle. To understand why the suit holds such totemic power for Barney, we have to look back to the early 19th century and a British dandy named Beau Brummel. Brummel was a London socialite who rejected the ornate powdered wigs and stockings favored by noblemen, dressing instead in more streamlined tailored coats, full-length pants, crisply pressed shirts, and knotted cravats. Brummel, who said he spent five hours a day getting dressed and polished his boots with champagne, inspired the rest of the upper crust to adopt his fashion and his attitudes toward appearance and hygiene. Broadly speaking, the man's suit has continued to connote wealth and status ever since. Diamond suited up. By the 1940s, though, suits could be produced in a quick, generic fashion, leading to the first era in which suits were worn by virtually every man. The muted colors and standardized design of the gray flannel suit reflected a society that sought order and stability after decades of war and depression. All I want is a good job, a mild future, and a little house big enough for me and my wife. It was a uniform that proclaimed your willingness to fit in and play your part as a cog in the machine rather than pursue an individual identity. 
but I don't know anything about public relations. Who does? You got a clean shirt, you bathe every day, and that's all there's to it. Barney also implicitly links himself to the world of the 40s and 50s. Thanks, Doc. He has a fondness for old-fashioned patriarchal ideals of living that allows him to thrive in a hyper-masculine business world where conforming to macho social norms is key to getting ahead. Nice tie, steak sauce. Oh, steak sauce. Where? I don't, I don't see Marshall, it. sidebar. Your tie is steak sauce. It means A1. A1, get it? In Barney's professional world, success is still about assimilation into the machine. Conformity. It's the one who's different that gets left out in the cold. And standing out in the wrong way can be a fatal error. Hey, Erickson, when did you join ACDC? <laughs> <laughs> this focus on fitting in is underlined by the running joke that Barney won't reveal what his specific job actually is. What do you do? <laughs> Please. Hey, so now that I'm working here, are you finally going to tell me exactly what your job is? <laughs> Please. And in his often brutal corporate culture... What do you got there, Erickson? Mommy packing lunch? The suit is the armor he wears into daily battle. This is corporate America, Marshall. Screaming is a motivational tool, like Christmas bonuses or sexual harassment. Much of the groundwork for Barney and his fellow business bros' attitude was laid in the 1980s with the rise of the power suit. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Characters like Wall Street's Gordon Gecko represented a generation of suit-wearing men who turned the pursuit of money into a religion. I create nothing. I own. We make the rules, pal. Making no apologies for treating the world as something to be conquered. Whoever has the most when he dies wins. Look, it's the American way. Their suits advertised their zealous embrace of work, greed, and capitalism as a 24-hour way of life. This is your game. Winner takes all. Barney's own philosophy may be relatively less cutthroat, yet he's no less competitive, whether it comes to laser tag <laughs> or taking on wacky challenges. If you did everything on that list, you would die. That wasn't challenge. challenge. accepted. He approaches every woman he pursues like a hostile takeover. And like Gordon Gecko, he's completely shameless about getting exactly what he wants. In my body, where the shame gland should be, there's a second awesome gland. While Barney takes obvious comfort in surrendering his individualism in pursuit of status, his friends Ted and Marshall, like many people who have been forced to wear a suit for work, associate it with servitude. You are sad. You are beaten down. Barney's friends represent the other side of a debate that's raged ever since the suit became the workplace uniform. Should we find our place in the machine and reap the rewards, or rage against it and carve out our own path? Now, I suppose you could learn to love yourself for the unique little snowflake that you are, or you could change your entire personality, which is just so much easier. <laughs> Suits are full of joy. They're the sartorial equivalent of a baby smile. While Barney subscribes to suits as a projection of success and happiness, they're also about protection and camouflage, an outer layer that covers up emotional damage inside. Give them some spiel about your deep-seated insecurities, which don't really exist because, let's face it, you're awesome. The last time he allowed himself to be vulnerable, Barney got so wounded that he adopted a whole new identity designed to make him invincible, Darth Vader style. He embraces superficiality because if he doesn't have deeper feelings, nobody can hurt them. When I get sad, I stop being sad and be awesome instead. We've seen this idea of the suit as a kind of disguise throughout pop culture. I need a new suit. Yeah, three buttons is a little 90s, Mr. Wayne. I'm not talking fashion, Mr. Fox, so much as function. Like Barney, Mad Men's Don Draper is introduced as a self-assured ladies' man who knows exactly what he wants, and he usually gets it. By golly, you are an indecently lucky man. However, we soon learn that it's all a lie. Don has assumed someone else's identity, and he uses his crisp suits, good looks, and knack for crafting ad copy to sell a false idea of himself. Of course, someone like you, you don't need to see yourself in a Cadillac you're walking about in one every day. Yet despite dressing the part well enough to fool everyone else, he never succeeds at feeling like that man inside. Took another man's name and made nothing of it. 
American Psycho's Patrick Bateman has sculpted himself into the image of 80s success, a well-groomed yuppie who boasts the cool, ruthless confidence and ability to blend in that is so valued in the business world. I hate that job anyway. I see why you just don't quit. Because I want to fit in. But Bateman, in fact, leads a deeply insecure, skin-deep existence where principles are replaced by choosing the right brands, and someone else having a better business card can send him spiraling into an existential crisis. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. A tasteful thickness of it. Oh my god. It even has a watermark. His society's lack of regard for individualism has made him lose all sense of who he is. Alan has mistaken me for this dickhead Marcus Halberstram. It seems logical because Marcus also works at PNP and in fact does the same exact thing I do. Marcus and I even go to the same barber. And driven insane, Bateman resorts to killing people in a desperate bid to somehow regain a sense of identity or even the feeling that he exists. There is an idea of a Patrick Bateman some kind of abstraction, but there is no real me. I simply am not there. Barney does not have Patrick Bateman's amoral detachment, although he does share his love of pop music. And not even the good Backstreet Boys, the older lame dance move comeback tour Backstreet Boys. The good Backstreet Boys? And his reliance on consumption to fill a void. I want to feel better, Marshall. I can't keep buying things. And while Barney's backstory is perhaps not as tragic as Don Draper's, the more we learn about his troubled past, the more we see how his reinvention was born of a similar desire to bury his true self beneath a perfectly cut Armani. You were abandoned, you never dealt with it, and so now you never allow yourself to feel anything, and that's how you survive in this corporate world. At times in the series, we witness Barney grow as a person, as he periodically lets himself be vulnerable and opens up to serious connections. I'm searching. Searching for what I really want in life. And you know what? I have absolutely no idea what that is. Metaphorically de-suiting, if you will. It's weird not seeing you in a suit. What's going on? My entire sexual history was built on a rotting foundation of lies. Whole identity is lost in a pit of menthol ashes. In Robin, the dude-like cool girl who seems the perfect match to his classic bro personality. To my femininity. No, you're more of a bro. <laughs> you're a dude, you're a man. He thinks for a while that he's met the exception who can actually make him change his ways. The emotional stuff, it's not your thing. I thought I'd save you the trouble. Maybe I don't want to be saved the trouble. Yet sooner or later, he inevitably backtracks. I know there was a time when it seemed like I was capable of going the distance, but if it wasn't going to happen with Robin, then it's just not going to happen with anyone. And closes up again behind his shallow suit identity. I found out I'll never trust someone enough to get married. My single life is and always will be legend. Wait for it. Handcrafted by Pietro della Camera, Milan's famous 101-year-old tailor, who upon completing the very last stitch in this suit, dropped dead. Despite the traumatic backstories that created both Barney Stinson's and Don Draper's trademark styles, the popularity of both their shows helped to usher in a resurgence of the suit as a symbol of masculine glamour. Nothing sexier than a man in a fine cravat. During the late 2000s and early 2010s, brands like J. Crew flourished by providing men with affordable, approachable suits, while Banana Republic even debuted a Mad Men-inspired menswear collection. We're basically Mad Men. We are! <laughs> We're such madmen! Meanwhile, Barney became such an icon that the Oxford English Dictionary recognized him as the quintessence of a certain iteration of the contemporary bro. Oh yeah, you just know she likes it dirty. However, as billionaire tech moguls like Mark Zuckerberg, Jack Dorsey, and Elon Musk became the new icons of power, they also created a new image of success. These guys were so important, they didn't need to dress like it. My colleagues and I are doing things that no one in this room, including and especially your clients, are intellectually or creatively capable of doing. They could run the world in a t-shirt and hoodie, or even a bathrobe. I think we were gonna let you parade around in your ridiculous suits pretending you were running this Sorry, company? Sorry! My Prada's in the cleaners! The suit can even now project the opposite of its previous connotations. 
As Vox pointed out in 2019, the suit has become a uniform for the powerless, increasingly worn by people at a disadvantage, like when they're applying for a job or appearing in court. Even old-school firms like Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan, once emblematic of everything the suit stood for, have shifted to more casual dress codes. And as the COVID-19 pandemic set in and more people began working from home, the clothing companies that rode the Mad Men wave have found themselves struggling to survive. Men, in short, are no longer suiting up. Making a point dressing like that? So you dress for me? Mm -hmm. By the time How I Met Your Mother ended in 2014, there were already a few other things about Barney that were beginning to seem a tad out of step with the times. Sexual harassment charges, nine for nine. His treatment of women. I'm pretty sure I sold a woman. I didn't speak the language, but I shook a guy's hand. He gave me the keys to a Mercedes, and I left her there. His elitism. Barney, can you grab me a screwdriver? Sure thing. Louise, Barney Stinson, 12H. I got 100 bucks if you can be here in five. Thanks. His casual racism. Hey, so you know how I've always had a thing for half Asian girls? <laughs> well, now I've got a new favorite. Lebanese girls. Today, his increasingly regressive feeling, misogynistic and materialistic attitudes hardly make him appear the role model that the majority of modern men want to ape in their wardrobes or otherwise. I drink every day, I sleep three hours every night, and I have multiple sex partners. I'm doing everything right. Meanwhile, the 80s greed is good philosophy Barney's suit evokes is at the root of much of today's crippling wealth inequality. The richest 1% of this country owns half our country's wealth. And as the world has fallen into cycles of global economic crisis, movies like The Big Short, The Wolf of Wall Street, and Hustlers have placed blame squarely on the suits those spawn of Gordon Gecko who exist only to rig the game in their favor. You see what they did to this country? They stole from everybody. Jokes about a sharply dressed rogue doing whatever it takes to make a buck no longer play as lovable or charming. Our company just bought them out in a ruthless takeover. Uh, took two months, cost 2,000 jobs. It was brutal. Who wants a t-shirt? These days, suits are symbols of a generation of men whose selfishness and vanity have caused more harm than good. CEOs, CFOs, investment bankers, corporate raiders, hedge funders, axe murderers, coming straight from the crime scene into the club. The suit, as an indicator of backward attitudes, has even been taken to nasty extremes by a group of neo-fascists and white nationalists who have suited up as a way of asserting alpha male dominance and adding a protective veneer of legitimacy to some truly abhorrent beliefs. Like all things fashion-related, the suit has gone in and out of style, and probably will continue to do so in years to come. In Don Draper's 60s, it was caught in the middle of a culture war between old-school family values and edgy bohemian ideals. This symbol of hard work and success to some becoming the thumbprint of the man to others. You know what it's like to watch all you ants go into your hive? Oh my god, stop talking. Make something of yourself. And despite all the ways American culture has morphed and mutated since then, the accusation made by the beatniks has essentially stuck. To be a suit today is widely seen as having given up on your sense of self to serve a broken system. It's something you are if you haven't bothered to preserve any integrity or soul that makes you more than a walking clothes hanger. Because that's who corporate America wants. People who seem like bold risk takers, but never actually do anything. For better or worse, Barney Stinson personifies the suit identity. He's an appearance-obsessed man's man who's built his life around the material trappings of success. But what do I have? My whole life, some money in the bank, some suits in my closet, and a string of one-night stands. And doesn't see anything wrong with that. My life rocks! Money, suits, and sex, these are tears of joy! So ultimately, looking back on Barney Stinson today is a lot like looking at the suit itself. It's undeniably stylish and appealing, but also outdated in many situations, often used to lend the appearance of sophistication to something awful, and ultimately rooted in a set of values that are mostly best left in the past. It's the end of an era! Hi everyone, I'm Susanna. I'm Deborah, and we're the creators of The Take. Please subscribe and tell us what you want our take on next.
This video is brought to you by Bespoke Post, a monthly subscription service that sends you curated boxes of high-quality products. All you have to do is take a short quiz to determine your likes and interests, and Bespoke Post will recommend products for you. Everything from clothing to grooming items to the very best of food and drink. For our first box, our team selected the Weekender Bag by Line of Trade. It's perfect for storing your video equipment, and it looks great too. If you're ready to treat yourself or shop for someone with impeccable taste, click the link in the description below to join Bespoke Post for free. And if you're a new subscriber, enter the code TAKE20 to get 20% off your first box.